Hello, everyone, and welcome to Awfully Silly. My name is Conception. I hope everyone's had a good couple of weeks since we last saw you for our SGDQ 2023 Awful Silly Block selections. Uh, tonight, we have another incredible show here for you. Uh, the theme being awfully competitive. That means we're going to be featuring games that have some sort of competition element involved, whether that be fighting. Uh, I don't think there's any racing here, but that would count. Or uh, just in general, the spirit of competition. Uh, before we get into that, though, uh, we're going to uh, go over a couple of announcements here. First and foremost, of course, Frame Fatales is Games Done Quick's all women online speedrunning community. They have an upcoming event, which is called Flame Fatales, that's going to run from August 13th through the 20th. The schedule is going to be released on July 6th. So that is, I think, next week, if, if memory serves. So if you're interested in checking that out, feel free to go on over to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for some more information. And additionally, if you happen to miss out on SGDQ 2023 or our Juneteenth celebration, be sure to check out the VODs that are now up on youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. Um, yes, for without further ado, I think it's time for us to get started, though. I'm very excited for this episode. We got some real doozies. Uh, real, real fun games on here, and we're going to be kicking it off with American Gladiators Any Percent, the NES game, uh, run by Mixmaster PJ. So go ahead and take it away. All right, guys. Hey, I'm Mixmaster PJ, and joining me here is Ninjembro. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> uh, we're going to bring you mix, uh, American Gladiators here for the NES. This is uh, from 1991. It's loosely, and that's that's even being generous, based off a TV show. Um, it plays a little bit more like a platformer. The other games and versions of this that came out on Genesis and SNES uh, have more of a tournament multiplayer atmosphere. This definitely doesn't. We're selecting all the individual events and beating them and going to the next level and so on. It doesn't really have a tournament structure. Everything gets a little bit tougher as you go, but it's not really uh, head to head, even though it does have a two player option here. Um, we'll have five events in each of the levels. And then finally, at the end, we'll have the, uh, the notorious obstacle course called the Eliminator, just like the TV show. So. Um, if you haven't seen the, the show before, don't worry. You're not going to be like completely lost or confused about what's going on here. It's going to be pretty clear to see what's happening. So um, we'll get the timer started here as soon as I hit one player's start. Are we ready back there, Conception, for that? I'm guessing we are. All right, cool. We'll get the timer going in three, two, one, go. All right, so you're going to see that uh, PJ goes with Joust first. Uh, huge speedrunning tech. The reason we go with Joust first is because when we start the game, that's where the cursor is. Uh, you're going to see PJ fight uh, four gladiators on these platforms. Um, he's going to be doing some very specific movements, not to get too close to them, because if he gets too close to them, they're going to fight back. Uh, but the goal is to just knock each of the gladiators off the platform. He will get a super stick after the third gladiator, which um, allows him to... Uh, defeat the fourth gladiator in one hit, the kind of catch there is that it has to be the first hit. If the first hit does not connect, you lose the super stick. So we're going to see him hopefully uh, get this uh, fourth gladiator in one hit. Uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's a pretty easy grab here. Um, as the levels progress, the, the super stick will spawn in different spots, and you got to try and run back and forth and uh, spawn the stick it's animation and grab it on different platforms and whatnot there. The thing that's really tricky about Joust in general is the jumping mechanics. Like, jumping from platform to platform just feels really unnatural. Um, you'll see that these are kind of, like, effectively mini-games that aren't particularly polished all that well, and they did the best they could, this one in particular. All right, so here we see uh, PJ going to Wall Stage 1. Uh, Wall is definitely the least like the TV show of all the events. Um, from speedrunning and just general gameplay's perspective, it's the most technical and the most difficult of the events to beat, um, but it also has the most time to gain for speedrunning. The controls are a little weird. The A button controls PJ's uh, right arm, and the B button controls the left arm. So you'll see PJ's kind of uh, maneuvering around this wall. Um, sometimes you'll see him make movements that kind of seem slow, but it's almost always because he knows where the other gladiators are going to spawn and they beeline straight for your location. So he's spawning them in a way that, uh, um, they're going to take care of themselves and they're not going to knock him off the wall. Nice wall. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, 70 on the in-game timer is pretty solid. Probably a couple seconds behind world record pace here, but nothing too crazy. We don't want to go too aggressive, uh with the mashing during a marathon. So um, here's Human Cannonball. This has some of the best sound effects in NES history. So I'm gonna get kind of quiet as we take care of one of these here. <laughs> uh, 
this is definitely not like the show at all. The show has you standing on a stationary platform. You grab the rope, you try not to gladiator over. This one has a lot more timing elements. The the position of the gladiator versus where you are on the rope is really important. Um, this one in particular, if I had released from the rope right there, I would have been blocked no matter what. Even the task waits for a second pass through here. So you need to make sure that you're kind of hitting it directly and not from above. And then in subsequent levels, if we happen to grab any power-ups along the way, we'll be able to scale the rope a little bit on Gladiator 4 and potentially grab a 1-up. And you'll see an, actually a, a chance for, for a ceiling clip in level 2 and level 3 human cannonballs in a second. Um, after this, we got Powerball, which is the easiest of the events that we have. It's, a, it's an auto-scroller. Um, it's just basically score as many points as you can in this amount of time. Now, this is the one in the TV show that was always the, the real the killer of knee ligaments. So you always had injuries in Powerball, it seemed. Like, people were getting clotheslined left and right. Um, it wasn't really on a you know an actual arena of some kind. It was basically inside of a television studio when they were laying down miniature golf felt uh, you know, on cement for this event. So typically speaking, if there were people getting hurt in American Gladiators, whether it was Gladiators or Contenders, it usually occurred in Powerball, actually. So, um, needless to say, we just have to put all the balls in the buckets here, and if we do that five times, we'll get a one-up out of the deal. I'm hoping that stockpiling the one-ups isn't going to be uh, relevant to our run here, um, but we might get some bad RG, the RNG later, whether it's an Assault or the Eliminator or something like that. So, just want to make sure that we're uh, in the best position to do well. Um, we have Assault coming up next, which... Uh, Ninjembro can explain a little bit when we get there, but that's the one from the show that that has the most highlights still that you see occasionally on like Instagram or Facebook where people are like, oh my gosh, remember this TV show? They're likely showing you Assault. That was that was the showstopper there. Yeah, so as PG said, going into Assault here, um, so basically it kind of plays like a, a shmup uh, genre of video games. What you're going to see here um, is he's going to pick up these weapons here as he's going and trying to shoot the, uh, very nice, uh, trying to shoot the little cannon there at the top that has uh, 3 HP in the first round. Um, really, the only change later in the game is the amount of HP that the laser has and the placement of the weapon. So yeah. Yeah, that's the the first uh, state level, so we're going to see PJ go on to level two, starting with Joust. Yeah. Now, level two Joust doesn't really get too complicated here. It just adds some extra steps and vulnerabilities here. It's almost like this is kind of a fighting game where there's like certain combos of moves um, where the the characters happen to be vulnerable for that moment in time. And if you hit them while they're vulnerable, they get pushed back. If you guess wrong, um, they'll block it and potentially hit you. And it'll also hit you if you get too close, like I did right there. Um, so the patterns get a little more complex in level two here, where I'm just trying to make sure and that I'm, I'm hitting, I'm guessing right <laughs> rather quickly. Um, it's okay to guess wrong usually once or twice, but once you guess wrong the third time, they are definitely hitting you back there. So we're just taking them out on the high side here, and we'll try and grab the super stick. We got to jump to the other platform first, though, to spawn it. And then I'll try and grab it here on the run, get a little momentum here. And then if I hit this guy right in the kneecap, he should one hit kill. And that's what we did. So Joust 2 is done. Very nice. Uh, so next we're going to see PJ go into Wall 2. Uh, walls are very different each level, uh, where the other events are pretty much the same. Uh, wall just has completely different layouts. Um, so you're going to see a couple things uh, here that are a little bit different than what Wall 1. Uh, first, in some of these wall levels, you're going to see these uh, gloves that PJ is able to pick up. Those gloves make it so that uh, he no longer has to tap A and B really fast to move. He can just move uh, with just the D-pad. Uh, but the Gladiator moves very, very fast when doing that. It's very easy to kind of mess up. Um, now you'll see a lot of time here, uh, and hopefully I don't get this uh, incorrect, um, but a lot of times when moving horizontally, um, instead of just moving horizontally, PJ's moving diagonally. Yep, that's exactly um, what I'm trying to do if I can. It's just a little bit faster than moving just horizontally because of the way the, um, the gladiator's hands, you can see kind of when moving horizontally, is to bring the, uh, the hands in towards the body, whereas going diagonal, you're still making uh, some... Yeah, basically, when you're doing a vertical climb, you're always able to progress. Like, each movement moves you one rung. You have to do two movements to move one column left to right, because your kind of left arm is going into your body, then your right arm goes further to the right sort of thing. Diagonally works the same way, so if we're going to go left to right at that pace, we might as well go left to right and up and down at the same thing. So, um, human cannonball here. We've got ourselves an opportunity for a power-up. You'll see it here on the third gladiator, once we take care of the second guy who was flying up and down over there. I'd be getting motion sick if I were him. Now you're going to see some gloves fly up here from the bottom. 
they are not the same as the gloves from the wall because they let me slide up and down the rope. So I get a little bit of freedom there. But I also get the chance of trying to clip through the ceiling here. So if I'm able to do it, I'll explain what happened. All right, cool. So if you grab the gloves and you make a perfect jump at the, the frame that the pedestal is at the very top there, you have a chance to clip through the ceiling and it'll put you right there in front of the Gladiator for a quick kill, which normally would take you two cycles. So luckily, luckily for us, by getting that clip, we save an entire cycle of swinging there, so it's really good. All right, on to Powerball 2. Uh, this is exactly the same as Powerball 1 with five less seconds and blue felt instead of green felt. Um, the Gladiators here, they don't really serve much of a purpose except to try and stop us from scoring points or extra lives. So we'll try to get one. Sometimes you can get two if everything's going right and you're not bumping into them too much, but... Uh, like I said, I'm hoping the live situation is not going to be relevant. We had a pretty clean run so far here. N you know, nothing crazy happened on the wall. No, no weird gladiator blocks on Cannonball. So I'm hoping that we don't need to use that stockpile, but you never know. Sometimes assault can be mean. Sometimes the Eliminator can be mean. So um, that's going to be, you know, w one of the most uh, make or break events of the, the game that we see here because it's got so much RNG associated with it, unlike a lot of these other ones. Um, assault, though, does change just a little bit from what we saw the first time. So before I get there, um, Ninjembro can kind of explain slightly how that's just a little bit subtly different than it was the first time around. Yep, and nice uh, two one-ups there. Uh, so very slight differences. The overall gameplay is still the same. Uh, however, you'll see the little weapons that PG is picking up uh, will be in just worse locations, a little bit more dangerous to get to. Um, and also the, the laser at the top has additional HP, so it's now going to take four hits to destroy instead of uh, three. Um, oh, not not playing nice there, but gets, uh, gets the kill right there towards the end. And it's good enough. I think uh, in my PB I actually had a run across in level two, so most of my time was made up in three and four, so... Might even be close to PB pace with how good that wall was. Alright, on to Joust 3. These are the most complicated um, patterns as far as like fighting game patterns in the game. If like level one was like Mortal Kombat and level two was Street Fighter, this is like King of Fighters. Like the, the, the vulnerability patterns and stuff like that just seem to not make any sense whatsoever. And when you get lost in the pattern, it's like so impossible to jump back in. So um, just the, the combination and being able to hit everything right gets a little bit trickier as you go on. Wall four is actually not as tricky, but the pattern seems to move twice as fast as usual. So. While the actual vulnerability patterns are rather simple, just kind of when you get lost, figuring out where you jump back in is really tricky. So hopefully that won't apply too much. We can just kind of keep this thing rolling here. This guy's been letting us hit him in the face a lot. And then we got it. Oh, man. Low? Oh, man, he's fighting back. Putting on a good show for the, the millions of spectators there. All right, we got to hustle and grab this super stick. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a show of it. Let's go with the one-hit kill and a kneecap. Boom. All right, sweet. That's Joust 3. Right. Yeah, that's Joust 3. So moving on, we're going to see Wall 3. So we touched on diagonal movement earlier. Um, you will see some nice diagonal movement here in Wall 3. Uh, there's going to be a little shortcut that uh, PJ takes um, partway through the level. Uh, but one thing that we kind of wanted to draw attention to, um, you see the diagonal movement, and you kind of see, if you look at the hands of the Gladiator, it's pretty much always on a wall. Um, the for as weird as this game is and as janky as it can be one thing that the programmers did exceptionally well is program the like the way the hands work if at any point in time one of your at least one of your hands is not grabbing onto something on the wall you will die you will fall from the wall so if one hand is kind of like over a gap and pj were to try to use the other hand it's it, you know it's you're, you're falling. Uh, I hope I get this. <laughs> All right, that's always tough. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Gotta spawn up the second one that spawned back. All right, here we go. There we go. 60's pretty and good. And that is wall three. Yeah, that, that's really scary. That gap there is really tricky, especially because you still have the gloves. You got to wait for them to expire before you really try and take a, a precise attack at that little bridge there. But it's just like Ninjembra said, I tried to make sure that one of my hands is always grabbing onto the wall at any given time. Um, all right, we're going to see some crazy stuff happen here in this cannonball. Well, one, we just missed the rope, so that's that happens sometimes. But you can see the speed has picked up drastically. And uh, I'll let you guys see what happens to this next gladiator. Where'd he go? Where's he at? No way. Wow. <laughs> From downtown. <laughs> and we gotta do it again, only this time we gotta grab some gloves. 
So we're going to take the jump before we can even see the rope. And we're going to try and do a ceiling clip here again, because if not, it's going to be a multiple cycle thing again. But this time the rope is going so slowly. So it'll be really tricky, but we got it. Let's get it right there. Very nice. There we go. Perfect. That, that is actually a really tough one to time because the rope is going so slow and the opponent is moving up and down so fast that you have to wait three cycles and let go right around six o'clock on the rope swing to get it. So you can see that that would be like right about now. It's about eight or nine second loss if you don't get that skip. All right. So Powerball three here. This is uh, the same as before and just five less seconds. So now is as good a time as ever to kind of explain what's coming up with the Eliminator here. Um, what we have happening um, in the Eliminator is five separate little tiny phases of it. So phase one is we're going to jump on all these platforms and avoid all the gladiators throwing medicine balls at us. Phase two is a hand bike section where the gladiators are all throwing medicine balls at us. Phase three is a conveyor belt section where we're jumping up and down all these platforms. Um, this is an auto scroller uh, when we get there, by the way. So we are going to be, you know, uh, forced to kind of move and not really take our time. But unlike uh, auto scrollers from other platformers, if we don't happen to uh, move quick enough to their liking, it doesn't push us along. It just says that we're dead because we touched the left side of the screen. So after the conveyors, another hand bike section and then some zip lines at the end. And uh, hopefully, we'll be able to exploit that a little bit. And I'll explain once we get the Powerball 4, the trick that we're going to attempt here. But yeah, here's Assault 3. I'll let Ninjembro show you what's going on now. Yeah, so for Assault 3, uh, kind of how we talked about before, the laser now has uh, 5 HP. Uh, and the weapons are in just really bad locations. Uh, all PJ's trying to do is get to the finish line. Not even going to try to take out the laser. We're hoping for a 41 or 40 in-game timer. So we got a 40, not too bad there. Uh, but getting the getting the kill on that stage is very unlikely. So uh, usually just goes straight for the, uh, the finish line. First of all, he would love the fact that you're calling him the laser instead of just laser. But two, laser, <laughs> the gladiator, as portrayed there, also known as Jim Star, is available on Cameo. If you you ever wish to have uh, an American <laughs> Gladiator wish you or a loved on a happy birthday or just uh, do a little pick me up video, go look him up. I definitely uh, definitely had him uh, congratulate me when we set a world record on this game back in 2020. And uh, since then, I think he's been in high demand and his price has gone up a little bit. But still pretty cool that one of the, the legit American Gladiators is aware of my existence and aware that this game exists and people are still playing it. So pretty cool there. All right, this is like the toughest Gladiator thing in the game. His combinations are rather cool. Quick moving, like I said, it can happen in all three of them, and you can see that I'm just guessing wrong all the time. Like, I'm going high, and he blocks, and then mid and blocks. And... Come on. Would you say that this gladiator can be a run killer? Uh, I don't... I, I don't know if Joust is ever really a run killer. I feel like it, it could be, but usually a run killer is going to be a wall death or something. You're getting greedy on Cannonball. I mean... No, the run is not, like, optimized to the point where losing two or three seconds on one gladiator on a perfect run is going to kill everything. The run killer now, with the way that the, the run is set up, is going to be the hand bike glitch that we're going to talk about when we get the Powerball. Because that is, like, a 45-second time save, and I don't care how perfect you play, if you don't get that, you've got no shot at the world record now. And this wall is also the big run killer, to be honest. Yep, and we do see PJ now on wall four. Uh, um, oh, that's all right. At the beginning. Better than me at the end. You gotta zoom through here. Oh, man, it's tough. Ah. This is the, the the new strat. The old strat is going around, spawn the gladiator, lead her into trouble. I'm just getting greedy. I'm on, I'm on hot picks, man. We gotta go for this. There we go. There it is. There we go. <laughs> So this section right here is a clear example of what I was saying earlier with the way the hands work, and you got to make sure one of your hands is always grabbing onto something, uh, or you're going to fall. Um, it's a little, it's not very intuitive, even though when you really think about it, it makes sense. It's just from a video game gameplay perspective, especially for the NES, uh, it's just very weird to, to really think about. Um, this stage does have some uh, pretty difficult sections here in the middle, um, and there's some very high-speed sections coming up here, so you're going to see uh, PJ moving pretty quickly through some of these sections, um, including with the use of that glove, but some of these uh, gladiator spawns are pretty rough. Yeah, that one there, I actually took a non-diagonal approach because I'm trying to spawn the gladiator, or not spawn the gladiator before I'm lined up with the gloves. This is one of my favorite gladiators to debate, though. 
So we said they're like red turtle shells, right? You just move your body like one pixel down and she goes down. <laughs> um, let's, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, we got there. That's so close. Ooh. The safe strat is obviously spawn her snake back down into the left, have her go down, and then go back up. But we gotta go for it. Come on. All the people watching, they gotta see gladiators uh, really put their best best effort there. All right, the cannonball, you guys saw long distance stuff before. It's about to get really ridiculous here. Um, what makes these so tricky is the speed of the ropes and the, the platform speeds and things not necessarily lining up. So look how fast we're going up and down. If you jump for that rope, you won't get it. It just won't happen. So you have to get on the end of the rope here and just hope it lines up perfectly. Same thing for the gloves here. We're basically going to jump blind at this. Ah, too high. That's all right. Ooh, so close. <laughs> You gotta hustle back here if you still want the gloves. They gave it to very us. That nice. was very generous. Alright, no special ceiling clip on this one, sadly, but there is a one up there. Um, we can't grab it on the first uh, pass-through. We can here on the second. And then we have not one, not two, not three, but four cycles we have to wait, because that gladiator is moving so fast that wherever we release from this rope, he will be able to block until fourth cycle around six o'clock, all the way back there. Seemingly not even within visual of where the, that gladiator is. So we're gonna try it right here around six o'clock, see if it connects. Look at that. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's the only time it'll work. If you do it a little bit too high there, he'll just throw up the pad and block you there. So the tough ones are done. We got Powerball here. I'm gonna explain the hand blake glitch that you're gonna see here. It's basically a wrong warp. Um, like I said there, it's got five different segments. Well, segment two and segment four are both hand bike sections. So what we try to do is if you are in the hand bike section and get hit by a medicine ball, it bounces you off. But if you happen to be at the very beginning of the hand bike section in the first one, you can bounce back and land on the platform again and then jump and grab the hand bike. And most of the time it will spawn a second hand bike because you just grabbed it there. And then if you take an intentional death, the game's like, well, this guy grabbed two hand bikes. He must be in hand bike section two. And they basically s skip you ahead to like phase four of the Eliminator. And you get to skip phase three entirely, which is awesome because that conveyor belt section is really, really mean as far as having to make jumps before the medicine balls appear on the screen that eventually might knock you over. So we're, we're trying to avoid that entirely if we can. We do just have one more event to take care of first. Yep, and an assault floor. Um, these, uh, this is even more impossible. The location of the weapons is just terrible. Um, laser is six HP. Oh, sorry, the laser is six <laughs> HP. <laughs> um, so uh, again, PJ is just going straight for the uh, the finish You're line. Close. Again, hoping for a forty-one or forty in-game timer. Oh man, if you'd come all and the way over nice, to the left, nice there, I think we were dead. So we took two early hits. So I was a little worried, but it worked out pretty good. And here we are to the eliminator. Yeah, so the first uh, part of this eliminator, you see all these medicine balls are coming up. These are pretty much here throughout the entire like first couple sections. Uh, they are complete RNG, uh, and to our knowledge, uh, we don't know a way to manipulate that RNG. So a lot of what's happening here, PJ is just kind of reading on the fly. Um, and I don't even know if I can personally describe like how terrible the controls are here. <laughs> That's not great. Like, I could jump up faster than I can fall down. <laughs> yeah, the, the the physics are wonky. The the controls are weird. Uh, oh my! These oh man! <laughs> Sorry, maybe we weren't going to get the right RNG for the the glitch anyway. Hey, uh, that's another thing. Uh, PJ already uh, talked about the handbike glitch, um, but you're at the mercy of the medicine ball RNG. <laughs> if you don't get a good medicine ball for the handbike glitch, you just don't get it. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, and if we don't get it, that's okay. We'll have to play the game as Game Tech intended. But that's alright. We'll get to see more American gladiators as opposed to less American gladiators. Oh man, it was rough. I probably should have oh, no. more there. That's okay. Yeah, this is definitely much more of a run killer than Joust 4. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, as, as some of these jumps, like that one there, that medicine ball was not even on the screen for an entire second before I started that jump, right? So yeah. that's what makes it tricky. If the medicine balls moved faster, um, actually, no, if they moved like the same, if they fell at the same rate I did, it would feel a little bit better. But they just seem to, they, they shoot up there so fast, and because you fall so slow, you're vulnerable for so much longer than you think you should be. 
All right, we're coming up on hand bike here. All right, give me a medicine ball. Come on. Oh, is that good enough? Oh, no, that right, second cool, one is though. All right, yeah. all right. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's a second hand bike! Sweet! <laughs> so we, get, we don't get to see the, the horrid conveyor belt section. We get to go right to the zip lines. And uh, I like to think of these zip lines as... Um, well, first of all, I've never been dangerous enough to connect from one... To ride a zip line like this, that then connects to another zip line immediately, right afterwards. That then connects to another one. But you're like, wait a second, how high are these guys that they're able to connect all these zip lines together and they're just able to keep flying? I like to think of this as reversing all the walls that we scaled. So if we went up like 30 stories worth of buildings there with all the walls, this is our way traversing back to reality oh. at the, the basement of the studio. Oh, we went too fast! Oh man, it's okay. We were right back here where we were before. Just gotta avoid the medicine balls. We should be okay. Um, the, the the hand bikes start to move before you even get there as well, so that also kind of throws off a lot of the visual cues there. But right now I'm pressing it like five bars before I get there. All right, cool. And that is the Eliminator. Time is going to happen when the timer in the upper left-hand corner there reaches zero. It'll start counting down here in a sec. And you guys can see the great ending. And that's time! And in typical NES fashion, we're going to get one animation screen here that's kind of ambiguous. Uh, Ooh, well I, I don't know which gladiators those are, but they're being presented to us in such a way that it looks like they're showing off uh, two contenders here. I didn't know I was controlling two different people, but I guess I was, right? I guess the wall and the power uh, powerball events, I was controlling a, a woman and I was controlling a man during cannonball joust and assault, I guess. I'm not quite sure, but that's what they gave us. And then immediately afterwards, we get ourselves a game over and a uh, <laughs> password screen. That's it. <laughs> so that's American Gladiators. Uh, it's one of the first games that I ever uh, decided to speed run. Uh, it was one of the first games I really remember owning. Uh, I, I picked this up at uh, Kitty City, which is kind of like a, a Maryland uh, Toys R Us knockoff sort of place back in the day. I remember grabbing a ticket, my grandmother taking me to the counter, and we got it in it. So um, this was the first game that brought me into speedrunning several years ago. Um, I hope you guys really liked it. I'm frequently streaming NES games. Some of them not this terrible, some of them more terrible. Um, Ooh, on more my terrible. Twitch channel, I mix and master PJ. And uh, would love to hear from you guys all there. But uh, thank you guys. Uh, thanks, Ninjembro, for the commentary and conception for putting on such a cool show where we could showcase this game. I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. The pleasure is ours. I'm definitely very intrigued on finding games that are worse than this that you play for the NES. So I'll definitely have to hit you up for that uh, because I'm sure that I'm sure we can find some good stuff here. Um, but yes, for everybody out there, uh, we still have a lot more awfully competitive games to go on tonight's episode of Awfully Silly. So be sure to stick around. But we are going to take a little bit of a break here. So feel free to stretch, uh, get some water, maybe joust with somebody in your uh in your house safely, of course, and then uh, we'll see you here in just a few short moments.